I'll speak up once. Kevin, you, your tape attempted 27 threes. Is that what you were looking for going into the game? No. So why did Dick do to turn you into a three-point shooting team? I don't, I don't think we, just because we shot 27, makes it, we turned into a three-point shooting team. That's your opinion. The stat that I'm looking at is going into uh, the game, we had shot 150 more free throws than any other opponent in our conference. And we shot three. Zero in the second half. So that's what I'm looking at. Why do you think you didn't shoot any more free throws? Was it? You answer it. You attack the basket. How much do you think Lively impacted? He did. Oh, he's a fantastic player. He's a, and, and Duke is a fantastic defensive team. Uh, they pressure you. They do a great job with their quickness, moving your feet. Um, Derek is one of the best, if not the best. Even if he does, if, even if he doesn't block it, his length and his athleticism um, uh, can alter it. He went to the free throw line three times. And we shoot 150 more than any team in the conference. You went with Puff Johnson a lot in the second half. Yes. This is Nance out. What do you think Puff was? Why did you do that? Why did you think he was giving you the advantage there? Felt like Puff played well in the first half. He hit a three. Felt like we thought Puff could do a good job. What did Duke do to hold the two points in the second half? Well, one, um, you know, Derek um, and Ryan Young are really good, you know, defensive players. They did a really good job of not allowing Armando to get to those spots. And with us being by far the best in the conference and getting to the free throw line, our best guy that gets to the free throw line is Armando. And he got to the free throw line twice. Are you saying that more fouls should have been called? Is that kind of what you're inferring? No, I'm just stating the fact that we shot 150 more free throws than anybody in the conference. And tonight we only shot three. Huber, you are stating a fact, but it seems like there was some feeling behind that that you didn't get the whistles you felt like you deserved. No, I'm just stating facts. What did you tell your team in the locker room after the loss? That I was proud of their effort and that, um, that I love being their coach. And I love these kids. It's a blessing and an honor to be with them every day. And, That for us this year, consistently, it's been, you know, the discipline and the details, the little things, the you know, a box out, a, a defensive assignment, execution on the offensive end, that has been up and down in late game situations. And um, once we get better and more consistent at that, I think it'll be a happier locker room than a sad locker. Hubert, Mead has made some strides over the last few games today. He took a step back. Uh, was it just one of those nights, one of those shooting nights where the ball wasn't falling for him, or was there something else? You know, I didn't fall against Pittsburgh. We had wide open looks from three. We, you know, there's a number of ways to score. You, you can score in transition. You can get second chance opportunities. You can, you can make threes. You can make twos, or you can get to the free throw line. Anybody else? Got another road trip at Wake yeah. on Tuesday. Mm -hmm. What do you tell your team to get back on track? What yes, do you, what, I mean, there's what do you no think other option. Yes. I mean, I don't know what else to tell the team. We got to play Wake on Tuesday. Crap. <laughs> you, no. That's, this is basketball. This is life. Let's go back to work tomorrow. Let's get back to work. Let's work hard. Let's do it with energy and effort and passion and enthusiasm. Let's go. Let's show up on Monday. 
Let's work hard, energy, effort, passion, enthusiasm, togetherness, closeness, hunger, and thirst. Then let's play on Tuesday against a, a great, unbelievable Wake Forest team. Have you seen the, the same level of enthusiasm as we saw and we kind of fell in love with during the run last year in, in March? Like I feel like you don't see the same level that, that we did when you watch your team on the court. Um, that's a difficult, uh, I think I know where you're coming from. It's just a difficult question for me to answer. And, and this is the reason I don't think about last year at all. I, I just don't. It's just, for me, it just has been no benefit. I don't think it has any benefit for us moving forward. I, I think I've said this to you guys before. The, like, the number one thing that I learned as a second year head coach is that every year is different. And so, um, I think our guys love playing with each other. I think our guys um, love doing this together. One of the things that I always tell them is to find joy and how hard it is to be successful, whether it's individually and as a team. And um, I think our guys really enjoy playing together. That's why they came back. Coach Shire's ready, so one more, Shelby. Mickey had some big shots for you guys, especially early in the second half when really nobody else was hitting. Obviously not the outcome you guys wanted, but what can you say about how he stepped up? Well, I'm proud of everyone. I'm proud of Leakey. I'm, I'm proud of everybody. I love these kids, you know. I told them that one of the things that is difficult in life is, is that you can do everything right and it's still, the outcome still might not work out. And so I was very pleased and very proud of the preparation for the team, the practice leading up to the game. I was proud of their effort during the game, and it, we just didn't, we came up short. And so, but that doesn't, it, just because we came up short doesn't waver um, my love of coaching them and being around them every day. Thanks, Coach. Thanks, everybody. Our only availability before Tuesday's game is uh, Coach will be on.